Hi guys, how you doing? Hope you're all good. Uh, welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be talking about cheat meals. Exactly how I set them up, how I set my days up around them, so they impact your day, they impact your progress as little as possible. Um, there's loads of different names for cheat meals, free meals, whatever you want to call them. Um, they're all part of the process, they're all part of this bodybuilding journey. So you need to know how to incorporate them into your days without affecting your progress as much as possible. Um, this is, over the last few years, I've had cheat meals that have ruined my progress, that I've had, few, few, I've had cheat meals a few weeks before my competitions that have ended up setting me back. I've had cheat meals that have turned into binges, which is the worst possible kind. And also, I've had times where I've been too scared to eat and stuff, so uh, it's really important to know how to control them. This is how, the best practice way of how I've found to have them where they don't even have to impact your routine. Um, I am, I don't know if you can see, but over there I've got a little whiteboard set up. Yeah, I know. So I've got a little whiteboard set up. <clears throat> it's got some information on and that's gonna show, that's gonna be exactly how to manipulate your food, manip manipulate your macronutrients. But first of all, there's just a few things I wanna cover. The word cheat meal, I know it's quite the common trend now. No one wants to call it a cheat meal and I'm one of them. When I'm talking to clients and people like that, I never, I try not to call it a cheat meal. Because the second you say the word cheat meal, people think, oh, I class a cheat meal. If I was telling someone to have a cheat meal, I'm basically telling someone to have like a bingy, really bingy meal. Um, so the second you say the word cheat, it gives this negative feeling of this meal that you're having. So you've been sticking to your diet all week. And because you're going to go out for a meal on a Saturday night, people call it a cheat meal. I can have a cheat meal. They could just be going for some, let's just face it, it's just food. People could just be going out for a steak and chips, but yet they're calling it um, a cheat meal, when really, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with going out for these meals. It's only a cheat meal, and, a, and it only turns negative if it turns into a binge, you can't control yourself, and you end up going overboard, and then for two or three days, you're feeling really guilty, feeling like crap, your weight skyrocketed, and you end up having to go overboard trying to compensate for that. So first of all, a really great way of doing things is just by calling it a free meal, or an off-plan meal, I will always say, on Saturday, if you want to have an off-plan meal, that's perfectly fine. The um, good thing about doing that is, I always try and preach and push people more towards thinking of smarter things. So instead of dieting all week and having this freedom, this euphoric meal that's going to change the world, which it never does. So I say an off-plan meal, but just make a smart choice. An off-plan meal is great because if you are dieting, uh, quite a lot of the times you're not going to be having your normal meals with your partners at night. Um, it's good to have off-plan meals if you've got family occasions on the weekend and stuff. So you should definitely try and incorporate these in, but just class it as a free meal because it's just an off-plan meal. And if you do want to be cool and post a video of a cheat meal, then fair enough, go in, go to Five Guys and get 10 burgers. But that's not going to do anything for your progression. So if you're having a free meal, always try and think of something smart. I always advise people to go for something that you can sort of track and sort of guesstimate calories. Go out for a Miller and Carter, steak and chips, great, and it's easily manipulated into your calories. A burger and chips, that sort of thing. Not going to Five Guys and getting a triple patty, quadruple, super-sized burger with cheese and bacon because the calories are just mad. Uh, Five Guys is epic, but if you are trying to diet or it's not the best option. Um, so just go to a normal place, get a burger. Um, you, can, you can fit those into your normal calorie requirements and I'd much prefer to go out on a Saturday night, have some normal food and wake up on a Sunday morning and not feel guilty about it. So if you do anything that fits your macros properly and practicing, oh what's the word? Practicing moderation, then you shouldn't really be needing, you shouldn't be really getting these cravings. If you're doing it right, you should be having so 20% of your calories each day, they should be smaller amounts. They should be, um, you should be fitting this nice food. And the whole idea if it, if it fits your macros is so you can have a little bit of what you like each day. That results in you not having to get cravings. That results in you not having to have a big bingy cheat meal on a Saturday night. So if you're doing it properly, you shouldn't be getting these cravings. You shouldn't be having these binges. And if you are, then you should understand that you're much better off ordering a pizza and either sharing it with your partner or just having two or three slices 
and getting it with a nice healthy side salad or just some homemade chips because that will save you a shit load of calories. So before we go any further, that's just a few little things I wanted to go over. Um, I'm going to take you over to the whiteboard. This is just a scenario. So the scenario is it's Saturday and your calorie goal for your week and for your day is 2,800. So you're currently eating 2,800 calories. That is your macro target that you've, been, that you've set yourself or your coach has set you. And you're working out that you're going out on a Saturday night, you're going to be having your cheat meal or your free meal, whatever you want to call it, and you're, you're, you're a prox, you've, a pro, you've, you've, you've made a smart choice. You haven't gone for an all-out extra large Domino's pizza and a tub of Ben and Jerry's. You've gone for, you're going out for a steak and chips or you're going out for a burger and chips. So you've guesstimated that your cheat meal is going to be 1300 calories, which is perfectly fine and very doable. I, I, if I go out for a burger and chips, I guess the calories are going to be around 1,000 to 12, 1,300 calories. So with that, you've got a couple of options how to, ba how to basically fit that into your day. Um, option one, got a couple of things down here, but option one. So throughout the day, you should track your food. This is exactly what I do. And best practice in my, in my opinion. So track your food. Log all your food into your MyFitnessPal and make sure you, if you, if your target is 2,800 and in the day you eat 1,500 worth, if you have three meals and they total 1,500 calories, then that leaves you 1,300 calories for your cheat meal. <clears throat> so that's going to, so although it's not going to be super precise or anything, at the end of the day you've left 1,300 calories to account for that cheat meal. So it's just basically going to swallow those calories up. So if you do this option, if you try and if you can make a smart choice with your cheat meal, then you can possibly just have just use one day's worth of calories, and then you wake up the next day and you don't have to change a thing. Um, obviously, you don't want this number going down too low. So if your if your numbers aren't two thousand eight hundred and they're two thousand three hundred, make sure you're not going too low and restricting yourself too much on that day. If personally, I've got a pretty good appetite and I can easily make fifteen hundred calories last me till say four o'clock, and then by seven eight o'clock I'm having my off plan meal. And then you've got option two, which uh, it's quite. Especially if you're dieting, your calories probably might not be as high as two thousand eight hundred up there. <clears throat> So you might be better off doing option two. So basically it's pretty much the same principles, but you just wouldn't go into such a bad deficit. So you track your food up to 2000 and then that's leaving 800 calories for your cheat meal. And then all you do is you'll be stealing 500 calories from, oh, not Sundays, from Sunday's calories. So the next day basically. So whatever calories you've gone over, you'll, Pinch them from the Sunday, if that makes sense. So your goal is 2,800, you've got 1,300 calories, so there's 800 gone, and then 500 calories from Saturday, from Sunday even, you will remove those calories from that day. So on the Sunday, you just have 2,300 calories, and then you've swallowed up that cheat meal within those calories that you've allowed yourself. I hope that makes sense. Um, here's a few little tips that'll help. I'm trying to get that light out of the way. Only borrow calories from carbs and fats. So make sure you're keeping your protein. So make sure you're keeping your protein high. So on the Sunday, basically, if you're doing option two and you're going to be having 2,300 calories then make sure that 500 calories that you're borrowing from that day is from carbs and fats. It's very easy to rob them from fats. So see the best practice, keep fats very low because it's, it's very easy to have high carb, high protein meals that keep you fill you up, that, that fill you up and you're not gonna really miss, you're not gonna really miss the fats too much, um, especially if it's only a few meals on one day. It's easy to sacrifice those. Um, another thing is from your cheat meal, try and guesstimate the protein as precisely as you can. 
So for instance, if this is your cheat meal up here, and your cheat meal is approximately, approximately 1300 calories, and you're having say a burger and chips, your protein might be 50 or 60 grams from that meal. So when you're working out how much to eat in the day, Obviously you want most of the fats that you're losing to be from carbs and the fats, but you also you don't need to hit your full protein target. You can leave some because at the end of the day, you will be having some protein in that cheat meal. There's lots of other ways of doing this. I know a lot of people that take a completely different approach. They go for, um, they would have their say cheat meal and then either days leading up to it or days leading after it, they might just drop 10% of calories or just 5% of calories from each day. So say two days before they'd leave some calories and then a few days afterwards they'd also leave some calories, uh, maybe 200 calories from each day until they've, um, I don't really know what, what terms to use, but sort of swallowed up that cheat meal, like um, utilised that, utilize that food and made sure their energy balance for the week is equal, because that's the most important thing. 1300 calories that I've just chose, that is very tame for a meal out. Restaurants, um, <clears throat> restaurant eating, um, quite often is the calories are pretty insane. It's insane how quick the calories fly up. So just be careful of that because let's just say for instance, you have a pizza, um, you go somewhere for a pizza. Pizza Express or something isn't too bad, but even your normal one of them, you're looking at well over a thousand. But if you're having a Domino's or something like that, uh, especially pepperoni, that's always the worst calories. For a large one of them, you're looking at over two and a half thousand calories just for the pizza alone. That's without the normal ice cream or something they have afterwards, which is then another thousand. So I always try and make smart choices. This week I've kept this video short, but next week I'm going to try and do a pretty cool video. Um, I've been watching some now, I've been trying to get some tips. Uh, there's a lot of little cool little edits you can do. Um, I've just been out today, I've just bought a new laptop, which is going to help me massively. Um, not just for the YouTube stuff, but I've bought it for my work as well. Because the one I'm currently using is, is painfully slow. Um, if you could, please, once you've finished watching this, could you just give the video a thumbs up, just leave a comment, um, anything, because I think all these little things, it just helps my video be seen a little bit more. Um, and YouTube is, it's very hard at the start to, um, it's a very slow game, I know it's going to take a year or a couple of years before I start getting um, like a real decent amount of subscribers, hopefully. Um, so, but I really appreciate you watching, I really appreciate all the cool feedback I've had, uh, a lad just stopped me in the gym this morning and just says keep the videos up. I'm having a few nice messages like that. And I appreciate it a lot. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next week, guys. See you later.